The cultivation of mammalian cells in the lab, or tissue culture as it is commonly called, is a critical tool for many scientists. Mammalian cells provide scientists with the means to study biological processes on the cellular level instead of having to work with a whole organism. In addition, mammalian cells can be used as a means to produce vital tools in the lab, such as antibodies or viruses. While undeniably valuable, learning basic tissue culture technique can be a daunting task for those new to the lab and veteran scientists alike. In this instructional video, we will provide some best practices and advice for those new to tissue culture. Before beginning any tissue culture experiment, ensure that the lab is equipped with all of the necessary materials. Some key instruments include a carbon dioxide incubator, an inverted microscope, and a class II biosafety cabinet. Preventing contamination is critical for any tissue culture experiment. Contamination prevention begins with establishing and maintaining a sterile work environment. Open the biosafety cabinet sash to the proper operating height and turn on the blower. The proper operating height is usually indicated on the instrument and tends to be about 8 to 10 inches. An incorrect sash height will disrupt the airflow in the cabinet and compromise your cells. Examine the unit and make sure that the vents are not blocked. Allow the unit to warm up for at least five minutes before use. This allows the unit to purge unwanted particulates in the cabinet. Once the unit has warmed up, wipe all pipettes and surfaces with 70% alcohol and allow it to evaporate. When working in a biosafety cabinet, you should minimize the number of times you enter or leave the unit, as rapid motions will disrupt the airflow. Thoroughly decontaminate all reagent bottles and bags of plasticware with alcohol before transferring to the biosafety cabinet. Before beginning an experiment, position all of the materials that you will need, such as plasticware, waste bins, and media. Never open tissue culture reagents or cells outside of a biosafety cabinet, as this can introduce contaminants. In addition, we recommend using filtered serological pipettes and tips, as this will reduce the risk of contaminating common equipment, such as pipettes and pipetmen. Body floor are a main source of tissue culture contamination. To prevent unwanted contamination, wear a clean lab coat and gloves when working in a hood. Before entering the biosafety cabinet, check your lab coat to ensure that your wrists and arms are completely covered. If you find that skin becomes exposed while working, wear disposable sleeves. In addition, avoid talking, coughing, sneezing, or breathing around your workspace by turning to the side or coughing and sneezing into your shoulder or upper arm. Before handling cells, you should examine your cultures both macro and microscopically for signs of contamination, such as bad odors in the incubator or a change in media color. Often, contaminated media will turn yellow due to the acidic byproducts of microbial growth. In addition, media may appear turbid or cloudy. Before working with your culture, check for signs of microscopic contamination with the high power objective of your inverted microscope. Often, low levels of contamination can be observed in the microscope before they can be observed macroscopically. In addition to microbial contamination, cross-contamination of cultures is a common problem for those new to tissue culture. To prevent cross-contamination, never work with more than one cell line in the biosafety cabinet at a time. Also, be sure to change your serological pipette or pipette tips anytime they contact your culture to ensure that you are not contaminating your media or other reagents with cells. We recommend using different reagent bottles for different cell lines to limit the chance of cross-contamination. When you're ready to switch to a new cell line, dispose of all trash, rinse the aspirator line with bleach, and wipe down all equipment and surfaces with alcohol. Lastly, before handling the new line, change your gloves. Finally, all tissue culture users should routinely screen their cells for mycoplasma contamination. Mycoplasma can be detected through several methods, such as PCR, fluorometric assays, and indicator cell lines. We recommend screening all cell lines two to three weeks after thawing and re-screening every two to three months thereafter. As cells are cultured, they will begin to accumulate genotypic variations over time. Consequently, after several months or years of continuous culturing, your cells have probably diverged quite a bit from the parental vial. This can influence the phenotype and the reproducibility of your data. To overcome this challenge, users should create a cell bank of early passage cells. Once cells are received and thawed, expand them for the first few passages until you have several flasks of early passage cells that can be prepared for freezing. Store the vials in a cryogenic freezer for future use. As you use your cell line, keep track of the passage number. Once the cells have been used for 30 or 40 passages, discard the flask and thaw a new vial of early passage cells. Once growth procedures are established, users should take care to treat their cells gently. 
When you're ready to aspirate, place the pipette in a corner of the flask to prevent disrupting the cells. When trypsinizing, or detaching your cells from the flask, do not add the enzyme directly to the monolayer, and try not to excessively bump the flask. This can cause the cells to come off the surface of the flask in sheets of clumped cells rather than single cells. Cell clumps can be very difficult to break up and will affect the health of the culture. Instead, hold the flask at an angle and pipette onto the top surface of the flask. Gently rotate your flask back and forth to evenly disperse the liquid. When you begin to seed a new culture vessel, be sure to evenly distribute the cells throughout the growth surface. Insufficient mixing will lead to patches of cells that are over or under dense and negatively affect the overall health of the culture. We recommend using a serological pipette to thoroughly mix the cell suspension to ensure even distribution. When seeding multiple dishes or multiple wells, consider preparing a master mix containing all of the cells and media for all of the dishes rather than seeding each vessel individually. This tends to result in better uniformity across plates and therefore more reliable data. We hope you've enjoyed this video on getting started with tissue culture. For additional videos, protocols, and useful blog posts, please visit Adgene's website. Adgene, a better way to share science.